Welcome back. So mates, it's that time where we run back today's uh, top stories just in case you are joining us. And we begin, of course, in Memphis as all five officers in the Tyree Nichols case have been charged with murder. This comes as law enforcement around the country prepare for the release of body cam footage this evening. The uh, Memphis police chief says it shows five of their former officers beating Tyree Nichols during a traffic stop. The 29 year old died just days after the incident. All five Memphis officers have been fired and are facing second degree murder and aggravated assault charges. The governor of Georgia has put the entire state under a state of emergency, mobilizing up to 1000 guardsmen in in preparation for potential upcoming police protests. Now, just last week, protesters uh, turned violent in downtown Atlanta, throwing rocks, damaging a handful of buildings and uh, police cars, one of which was uh, set on fire. Uh, they were upset over a planned police training facility and the killing of an activist who police say shot a state trooper during a sweep. The uh, state of emergency will remain in effect until February the 9th. And Wells Fargo is headed back to court to face black homeowners in bias lawsuits over uh, appraisals. Fair Housing Act and federal civil rights filed the suit following claims brought by a black couple who alleged the company lowballed their refinancing appraisal due to their race. Now, the Washington's suit is part of a wave of litigation, including a consolidated class action in federal court in California, accusing Wells Fargo of discrimination in refinancing. And finally, emergency benefits that have helped boost payments to SNAP recipients during the COVID-19 pandemic are set to end soon, leaving families with less money and higher grocery prices. Now, according to the U.S. Department of Agriculture's Food and Nutrition Service, in 17 states, those added emergency benefits have already expired as of January of uh, 2023. Uh, in the remaining 32 states, plus Washington, D.C., Guam, and the U.S. Virgin Islands, the extra money will dry up starting uh, next month, or uh, March of 23, rather, uh, benefit uh, month. Nationally, the minimum benefit is 20 bucks a month. Ni Thanks, Courtney. Now off to Haiti, where protesters and some police officers protested at the official residence of Haiti's prime minister in the capital of Port-au-Prince in response to the recent killings of police. Social media images appeared to show protesters outside the prime minister's residence and at the country's main airport. This all comes amid widespread gang violence in the country and the killings of several police officers in the line of duty this week. Prime Minister Ariel Henry, who was returning to Haiti from a summit in Argentina, was not at his residence during the incident. He has not commented publicly on the demonstrations. And it looks like history around the world is uh, struggling with the truth. Australians have marked the 235th anniversary of uh, British colonization with a public holiday that is evoking anger and indigenous injustice. Now, the push is to acknowledge Australia's first inhabitants in the Constitution. There are growing public calls to change the date of Australia Day, which is known to many indigenous people as Invasion Day and Survival Day because of the disastrous impacts on First Nations people of British colonists taking their land without a treaty. Now, the government joined several large corporations in allowing staff the choice of taking the holiday off or working and taking another day off instead. Nicholas Perkins, a graduate of Howard University and Fayetteville State University, is making history as the new owner of the international Fuddruckers restaurant brand. As a former franchisee, Perkins, who now acquired, uh, who's now acquired all 92 of the company's restaurants in the U.S., Canada, Panama, and Mexico for a total of $18.5 million through his affiliate, Black Titan Franchise Systems, LLC. 
Perkins plans to expand the brand and bring in new franchisees, both domestically and internationally, as well as seeking strategic marketing partnership opportunities to grow and sustain the brand long term. All right, good for him. To Alabama now, where multiple schools in the state have canceled events featuring black award-winning New York Times best-selling children's author Derek Barnes. Barnes says events scheduled to take place during Black History Month in Hoover and Alabama Baxter City schools were canceled without explanation. He believes the cancellations were political and motivated by ignorance and fear. Alabaster City Schools has not yet responded for requests for comments, and a representative of Hoover City Schools said the cancellations were due to a contract issue. The ex-Florida recruit who had a scholarship pulled for dropping the N-word in a video has received an offer from HBCU. Marcus Stokes tweeted that he received an offer from Albany State University, a public historically black university in Albany, Georgia. The Albany State Golden Rams play in Division II. The team was 7-3 overall and 5-2 in Southern uh, Intercollegiate Athletic Conference play. Uh, the program finished in third place in the conference behind defeated Benedict and Fort Valley State. Now Stokes played quarterback for Nice High School in Point Vedra Beach, Florida, and is expected to visit Albany State next week. Hmm. We talked a little bit about this, you know, upstairs before you know we we came on down to do uh, the show, and I think it goes back to the conversation first and foremost of. You know, we're saying on one hand, the N word is never okay to use. You know, even you know amongst our culture, um, versus you know it being a part of the lyrics. And uh, he was sitting in his car. He was you know mouthing along with with a rap record that that said the word, the N word. And you know, you had this trickle out uh, effect. So I think the conversation starts there <laughs> in regards to you know the use of the N word outside of maybe lyrics as 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 to how he used. It. And then I find it very interesting and ironic that an HBCU said, you know, we feel a little differently about, you know, the accusations and we want to, you know, offer him a scholarship to come play. Obviously, he was uh, a talented player. He was originally recruited by a Division I school quarterback. Um, I don't know, a lot of people siding on different uh, sides of the fence on this one. I think part of what makes this story so interesting uh, and sets it apart from you know, other stories where we've heard folks you know, using uh, you know, the N-word and engaging in racial violence uh, and, uh, and, and everything of the, su of the such, uh, I think what makes this story different is that he's going to an HBCU. And so the conversation that we're having right now, mm -hmm. I would imagine, uh, fasten your seatbelt and get ready because <laughs> you go have a lot of these conversations at the HBCU. And so in some ways, I don't know if this could be a, a demonstration of restorative justice. You know, what does it look like uh, to atone for, you know, having used language uh, that has created harm? Um, well, in his case, you go to an HBCU. Uh, and you uh, get into community with folks that are there uh, and you work through it. And so it's going to be interesting to see uh, how that HBCU experience, um, how it affects him and how it, uh, uh, you know, changes his perspective, perhaps. Yeah. Uh, if he decides to go, because they say he's just going for a visit, he's been offered a scholarship. But I, I still think at the beginnings of the conversation resides in this usage of N word, of the N word, you know, inside of, of some of these lyrics and, and, and you know, that uh, everybody has a tendency to listen to because uh, hip, hip hop is, is uh, you know, is uh, rock music at this point. These hip hop artists are rock stars and the language that's being used is being used. And so when you, you know, how do you go about different, uh, differentiating when, you know, if it's ever okay, when it's okay or when it's not okay based upon them being used lyrically is what I'm saying, it's gonna, which is what he was mouthing. It's going to be interesting to see how this debate continues mm -hmm. and if this debate transforms at all because, you know, we're living in a, a time where tensions are high, mm -hmm. where we're seeing examples of white supremacy violence uh, again and again and again. Uh, there are folks that are organizing. 
uh, for racial justice. And so the sensitivities are definitely um, high. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and we'll see what people make of that. Do people sort of adjust their language, adjust their behavior? Uh, or tolerance not. or not. All right, keeping with uh, HBCUs, TSU is hoping for grant for a Grammy win next week for their critically acclaimed gospel album. The HBCU's record nomination for Best Roots Gospel Album marks the first time a college marching band has been nominated in this category. It would be especially significant that the honor went to an HBCU where marching bands are often an essential part of the school's identity and culture. The Urban Hymn no, that's the name of the album, includes new arrangements of classic hymns and new tracks written especially for the album and features Fred Hammond, John P. Key, Ja'Kalen Carr, Kiara Sheed Kelly, and more. The Grammys air next Sunday, February 5th. Good luck. And more HBCU news for you, uh, this time with the Home Depot, where they're reporting that it will increase its investment in historically black colleges and universities to $4 million in 2023 by launching an expanded range of community projects and career resources for students in its Retool Your School program. The vote-based Retool Your School campus improvement grant is expected to support 30 campuses this year with grants ranging from $40,000 to $150,000 per school. This is according to officials over at the Home Depot. HBCU students and alumni and advocates can vote for their favorite HBCUs online, on Twitter, or Instagram using the school's designated hashtag found at retoolyourschool.com. <laughs> Applications are currently open and close February 10th. That's a great program. We used to work with them. All right. The Grays Foundation is expected to honor the founder of the National Negro Opera Company ahead of Black History Month. They're doing so by launching Hidden Voices, which is an education and advocacy initiative of uh, the Denise Graves Foundation and will tell the stories of diverse classical vocal artists whose stories have been omitted from American history especially Mary Cardwell Dawson of the Negro Opera Company. Final performances of the tribute will take place this weekend at the Kennedy Center. And it's good to, to see stories like this. There are, there are so many um, hidden figures uh, in that particular realm of music. You know, we, we get down soulfully and R&B and jazz, but when, when it comes to classically trained, you know, African Americans, sometimes you, you don't hear too much about them. I studied uh, uh, classical music, so, so it's, it's been a passion of mine, and they are, they are there, but once again, it's, it's on us to discover them, so it's, it's, it's good to hear about programs like this that are putting them out, you know, on the, on the front lines. And, and speaking of really good programs, I just want to go back to the HBCU mm -hmm. Home Depot program, mm -hmm. uh, retoolyourschool.com. Yes. Uh, that's where you all can go to vote. Um, you know, we've just been, we've been talking a lot about uh, Ed Reed mm -hmm. this week mm -hmm. and uh, 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 the students over at Bethune Cookman, uh, and you know, these sorts of dollars can go really far. If anything, you know, they can help to to rebuild trust and confidence. Uh, that you know these schools are not just investing in students, but they're investing in the infrastructure mm -hmm. that uh, uh, so badly needs to be updated. And so it's good to see that there's a company that is stepping up, stepping forward, uh, and uh, making it fun in a very fun way. They're investing in yeah. our HBCUs. It's an action-based campaign, so you, you got to vote and you got to be down for your school and uh, put a vote in so they can they can win that money. It is a, it's, it is a fun program. All right, still ahead, one R&B singer is in hot water for what he owes in back taxes. We'll tell you who it is and just how much he's gonna have to pony up. You're watching <laughs> Voxel Black Lord Report. Have mercy.